Very good. Now, on to, uh, I guess, onto the topic of today, and, and Matt, you, you mentioned before, look, we're going to be talking about some um, some pretty cool technology uh, that is uh, coming or as actually is already there. Um, and the topic we're going to be talking about is is really around a new era of, era of collaborative note-taking inside of Microsoft Teams. So recently we've, we've seen this uh, you know terminology about the new era of, of SharePoint and, and OneDrive coming as well. Um, but we've got this. We've got this. Um, I'll say. I'll say competing, um, but it can also and probably should be thought about being complementary um, aspect inside of Microsoft Teams and specifically around note taking, where the old school wiki tab in Microsoft Teams and channels has been replaced by uh, a OneNote powered notes tab, and recently we've just. Re- um, seen the introduction of, of collaborative meeting notes powered by uh, Microsoft Loop. Mm-hmm. Now, there's been a, a lot of research over many, many years about, uh, you know, the, the different areas of the brain, for example, that get activated and, and that type of thing when you're using a stylus and you're writing notes or a, a lot of it's centred around education Um primarily, mm. but it does transfer into, into business as well uh, when we're sitting in meetings and we're actually writing. Yeah, so um, it's interesting. So there is this note-taking confusion, if you like. You mentioned old school wiki, for example, in Teams. Going back before wiki in Teams, though, there was one note. One note started. There's the Teams note-taking app in Teams. It went away. It came back. Is it there now? Is it not? Uh, you know, where do we take notes? But what hasn't changed in the era of technology that I've been living through, which is the last, you know, um, 40 years from a schoolboy through to uh, a working person of uh, technology is the way the brain works. Uh, We think maybe that kids today might be different, uh, but they're actually not in the way the brain works. And some research done by professors Van der Weel and Van der Meer from Norway, they put, um, I think they're called EEG nets over people's heads to measure the electrical pulses that go on when we type at a keyboard versus when we write. And in short, the results showed pretty clearly that the brain is far more active when people draw or write than it is when you type on a keyboard. So obviously OneNote's been uh, been around for, for quite some time. Um, oh, uh, yeah. And, and Daryl, we've now seen the introduction of Microsoft Loop. You are probably the the guru and the go to person around Microsoft Loop globally at the moment. So maybe you can give us a, a little bit of an insight because I know um, you probably come across this as well. But I know people uh, still are. You know, if I ask people about, have you seen Microsoft Loop? Have you heard about it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, a lot of people actually don't even know what it is. So maybe let's start by your take on or, or your explanation of, of what Microsoft Loop is. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I, I think it starts again at, at the idea space. That's really the intention of mm. the product. Um, and it's interesting, you know, part of the reason why people don't know much about Loop is because it wasn't really introduced in a traditional way that an app might be introduced. It was this tiny little thing at the bottom of a Teams chat, and you may or may not click it. And um, if you did click it, you might have been confused. Like, what is this thing that's it's popping something up there? Um, but the idea was that if you were in a conversation uh, then and you needed to quickly create a space to be able to work together, that you would click this button, uh, it would pop up a, a, a blank box where you could pop in a title, you could send it off to the person in the chat and you could start working together. Uh, and, you know, a bit like how Matt was talking about with, uh, you know, being able to grab a pen and, and start writing and doing your ideas – there's no choice there in terms of font. There's no, you know, what color pen or anything like that. You just do it. And you're, you're removing some of those initial choices that might actually be distractions from uh, coming up with your idea. So that was one of the intentions with Loop, whereas it's actually, you know, it's still a, a typing thing, but um, it's added to that chat. Um it also helped to remove some of those choices around, okay, well, maybe if we were doing it digitally, we could be uh, held up by, well, which notebook, which team, which document, you know, all these things that we might have to make choices before we start working on things together. And, and that was actually kind of the funny thing about um, – You'd actually see it sometimes in meetings where people would just go, oh, let's just just write the notes and chat 
literally in a conversation mm. and type it. And so that's how I used to tell people about how this, this first experience of loop is, but it's grown from there. 